Open that is in a few days' time on March the 8th. Uh, the uh, CP, so-called CPTPPA, is going to be signed in Chile. You guys, along with the rest, many other people in Aotearoa, New Zealand, have been campaigning against this over many years. So this rally, along with rallies in other centres, along with other activities, such as the... Uh, a uh, very brave group in Christchurch who uh, uh, chained themselves to the railway tracks. Thank goodness in Christchurch they don't have many trains. Um, uh, bringing to the attention of people in New Zealand that really there have been no changes. As much as uh, certain politicians want to tell us that what was bad is now good, um, uh, you'll hear during the day uh, that that is not the case. We hope that this will be uh, quite a, um, uh, a short and succinct rally, um, not to drag on uh, too much. Um, and the speak we've got a number of speakers today, um, starting in a few minutes with uh, Brian Bruce, but including Brian Bruce, uh, Lila Harry, uh, Mikey Brendorfer, Peter Whitmore, Moania Manapoto. Um, we've got uh, some. Uh, uh, entertainment for you um, uh, from uh, Mark and Brenda and uh, Moana after her speech will be entertaining us as well. So a good hour and a bit uh, for us to take stock on what has happened because this is a sovereignty issue, this is a Maori issue, this is a women's issue, this is an environmental issue, this is yes a trade issue but trade is just one aspect of why you have been concerned enough to come along today to express your opposition uh, to what is going to be done um, in a few days time i'm robert reed president of first union and i'm your mc for the day um, and um, so first of all it just gives me a uh, pleasure uh, to uh, welcome brian bruce Brian Bruce, uh, those of you who watch uh, TV3 mostly, is a journalist, a filmmaker, a promoter of public television, um, a great guy and certainly one who has been following this and is still following this and we will see him documenting uh, what has been happening as far as the TPP negotiations go. So welcome Brian and we're very keen to hear what... I'll read it again. The comprehensive and progressive agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Where is the word trade in that? It's not there because actually this agreement is primarily about increasing the power of corporates and the financial elites of the world. That's what it's about. That's what the majority of this agreement is about. A very few, num a few, very few chapters are actually about what you and I think of as trade. Now, a while ago, a long time ago, people got the idea that we should drop tariffs. We should have free trade. We'd all be better off if we had free trade. Okay? That was the idea. The idea was, and also a thing called comparative advantage. New Zealand would grow, have, be the food producer, and we would swap our food for television sets and cars and what have you. That was the idea, right? and we'd all be better off. Currently, the government is still arguing this. I listened to David Parker the other day and he said words to the effect that if other countries drop their tariffs, that's going to be better for our export exporters. And we're, make, we're going to make a lot more money and that'll be good for the workers because they'll make more money and they'll have a better quality of life. Where have you heard that before? This is trickle-down theory. It doesn't work domestically. Labour agrees with that. Jacinda Ardern said, trickle-down, you know, uh, neoliberalism has failed. But when they do, when they negotiate uh, uh, sorry, in internationally, it's trickle-down theory. Now, how does this affect you? Do you like toasted sandwiches? I like toasted sandwiches. So I went to the warehouse the other day and I bought a toasted sandwich machine. 
Who give me twenty dollars for this toaster sandwich machine? Fifteen? Ten? I bought this sandwich maker for nine dollars, ladies and gentlemen. How the hell can they do that? Nine dollars. It's got plastic, it's got metal, it's got a, a plug on the end, it's in a box, it came all the way from China and, and the warehouse made a markup. So anyway, what I did next was I went to the countdown next door. And I bought a block of butter. Six dollars <laughs> twenty, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Two thirds the price of the bloody machine. Yes. Tell me again how free trade works. Because the poor sod that is working all hours to make a sandwich machine for nine dollars is being exploited. And in the last two years, butter has gone up from $3.20 to $6.20. Let's say that's about, let's be conservative, let's say that's a 75% increase. Put your hand up if you've had a 75% increase in your wages or your salary in the last two years. So there's something wrong here, isn't there? There is something wrong with the way that we trade. We've we are a country that produces dairy products and yet many of us can't afford to buy them because we're paying the world price for them. And on the other side of the planet, there are people working in factories for a pittance to make, the, uh, make machines like this one. I'm not against trade, ladies and gentlemen. I'm abs we can't survive without trade. But free trade isn't fair trade. And what some of the world's top economists that I've spoken to for this documentary, people like Joseph Stiglitz, Nobel Prize winning economist, is telling us that whatever we thought free trade was going to do, the reality is that in developed countries, it widens the gap between the rich and the poor, it gouges out the middle classes, it has done that, and poorer countries stay poorer for longer. So I'm just here today, today, with one simple message. For you to understand that free trade isn't fair trade. And what we have to do, not just New Zealand, but other countries and the world, is to find a better, fairer way of trading. And we shouldn't be rushing towards, you know, March the, the 8th, just because these guys want to do this deal. Now you'll be hearing from other people today about some of the quite dire things that the investment chapters hold. But all I want you to think about is when you go to the supermarket next time, when you go to the warehouse next time, just have a think about how the fact that free trade isn't fair trade. Thanks very much. A Minister of the Crown, a Union Secretary, an ILO official, a living wage employer, is studying for her master degree um, in law um, and on labour rights and now currently works for the trade union aid and development organisation called Union Aid. There could have only be one person fitting that uh, description, Lila Harry. We welcome you uh, very much today. Thank you, Robert. I thought when you were describing the come again, go on again, on again, off again, up again, down again history of the TPP, that you were about to introduce me. <laughs> Kia ora koutou. It's really um, wonderful to be here today with all of you. And I was thinking, you know, anticipating as I came towards this place that we would be a much smaller number than we were a year ago when 30,000 of us flowed down the street when young people blocked the entrances to the motorway in some incredible direct action and when we had a strong parliamentary majority in opposition standing shoulder to shoulder with us to defeat this pernicious agreement 
and what's more, to defeat this whole approach to our international economic relationships, which should be built on solidarity, on compassion, on fairness, on reciprocal advantage, and not on the corporate charter that the TPP represents. But one person I knew would be here today, and that I would see as I stood here, and I'm so right, is Myrie Ledbetter. And I always think of Myri when I come to these events because when she wrote her history of New Zealand and the opposition generally to the occupation of East Timor, I remember her describing the decades when people just stood in lonely little groups in the rain and the cold with the placards bearing witness to that terrible um, situation and how eventually that mobilised into hundreds of thousands of people around the world standing up for human rights and justice. So I just want to call out to all of you um, the strength of bearing witness, of continuing to hold the line against this kind of continued um, development that in, uh, is so last century and so missing out on the opportunities that this century and this millennium hold for us. Um, I also want to do that as a member of the Labour Party. And it wasn't long after I joined the Labour Party that the Labour Party registered its opposition to the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. So you see, I was prepared to join them when they were for it. And then I went through this moment of excitement and um, solidarity within the Labour Party when they were against it. And now we're back, but it's sort of like three steps forward, two steps back, because each little bit of progress brings us a little closer to a better situation. I also want to recognise how this agreement is not in the interests of the working people, either in Aotearoa, or in the other 10 countries that are signing up to this deal. It is a disgrace that a deal which will have an impact on the ability of working women to campaign and fight for improvements in the labour law that affects us will be signed on March the 8th on International Working Women's Day. In Aotearoa alone, there are policies underway in our own parliament, like the fair pay agreements, like the extension of the living wage across the public sector, like the abolition of do what you like to independent contractors rules which we have currently. And all these progressive labour law developments could be challenged by foreign-owned multinational companies operating in the New Zealand service sector if they, if they had a negative impact on those companies' profits and those companies that came from countries or managed to find their way into countries through treaty shopping who have signed up to the TPP. So I think it's particularly disappointing that the guys and some women who put the final words into this agreement in Vietnam and since then decided to celebrate um, or to rub our noses in it on our own special day, March the 8th, International Working Women's Day. So just in um, closing, I want to assure you that the Labour rules within this agreement are by no means the gold standard that we have been told they are. Those countries with some of the most um, dire violations, ongoing violations of labour rights, who have signed up to this agreement, the agreement gives us no power to influence their labour laws whatsoever. For example, in Brunei, where there is bonded labour, where migrant workers are, are um, continuously uh, having their passports uh, confiscated, are imprisoned and whipped uh, for violations of workplace rules, where cross-gender communication is not allowed under the terms of Sharia law, 
where it is not possible for people to effectively organise a union. There is nothing in this agreement that would allow us to take any um, case against Brunei under the terms of the agreement. And that is what we've been told is a gold standard. There is nothing in this agreement that would have stopped New Zealand passing the Hobbit Law, which took a huge or a large number of workers in the film industry outside the protection of trade union mo membership, collective bargaining rights, and uh, the right to organise when a law was passed saying that all these people who thought they were employees were not employees, were not allowed to be employees and had to be treated as independent contractors. So there's nothing in this agreement that will protect us from having our own laws consistent with the fundamental conventions of the International Labour Organisation. What kind of gold standard is that? The only gold standard that is in this agreement is in the resistance and the dissent to it, the hearts of people like you who are standing here today, people from around the region and around the world who will continue to stand up for the opportunity to have agreements based on solidarity which recognise the importance of our cultural space, our democratic space to create and to fight for the kind of labour laws that we want and we know that we'll keep on doing it. Kia kaha, it's wonderful to be with you all here today. Thank you. And we look forward uh, to your final presentation to us today. Not your final, but the final. Uh, kia ora koutou, hengi nui kia koutou. Uh, ki ngā tangata whenua o tāna ki mā kaurau, uh, tēnā koutou, e ngā iwi o ngā haewha, tēnā koutou. Uh, I haven't got much voice, which means this will be short. Um, the first thing I want to say is that a lot of people have been saying that they're quite despondent. And I want to say that we actually have to celebrate what we've achieved. These negotiations took six years. And the reason they took six years was that spanners kept being thrown in the works because we had leaked texts, we had analysis, we had mobilizations, and we had people giving voice to say, and I can't chant properly, but TPPA? No way. Not only was it strong enough that in the US Obama couldn't get the final deal through there, which is the only reason it ended up on Trump's plate, it may never have got through the US Congress even without Trump, but here as well, we made it an election issue. Since when has some obscure, obtuse international economic agreement been so significant that the main opposition parties, Labour, the Greens, New Zealand First, the Māori Party, Mana, all said TPPA? And they said it in the select committee after the submissions, the 6,000 plus submissions from people kept the pressure on after the signing and said we're not buying the deal, that there's nothing we can do. We are still going to have our say that we do not want this done in our name. It's not our fault that when they were elected, they betrayed their promises. But as Moana and other speakers have said, we need to continue to hold them to account. Because if there are not the submissions before the select committee, and if there are not the submissions opposing the legislation to implement the deal, they're going to say, see, people believe 
that this is genuinely, as the Prime Minister said, a much better deal than it was before. They know that it's exactly the same text that they said they would not support the ratification of that they intend to sign next Wednesday in Chile. All they've got is nine extra pages wrapped around that text that says that there are 22 of over 1,000 provisions that are suspended, not removed, but are suspended. So the text has not changed. They have changed as well a provision that doesn't require the US to be a party for it to come into force. And they're telling us that, oh, if the US decides it wants to rejoin, we may not reactivate all those 22 provisions. And they're mainly provisions around health because that's where they found the greatest political damage because groups like the Doctors for Healthy Trade but also communities who said we're not going to buy into this deal that make our access to medicine so much more expensive. That campaign was so successful it was the first things they decided to suspend. But the Investor State Dispute Settlement, the right of the foreign investors to enforce their special protections against governments when regulations significantly impact on their profitability or their value, those are still totally intact. Despite the Prime Minister calling them a dog. Well, if they were a dog before you signed the agreement, they're a dog when you sign the agreement, and they will remain a dog for as long as that agreement continues. Now, they've got some spin going on around the periphery of it, saying, oh, we've got some countries who've signed side letters with us that say that we won't let our investors sue the New Zealand government. But they won't tell us which countries, except for Australia, which was already in the original agreement, because the Australians and New Zealanders don't enforce the agreements against each other. So we don't know whether it's Brunei and Peru and Vietnam who have said we won't sue the New Zealand government if our investors want to, to sue them. We don't know if it's them or if it's Japan that has the fifth largest stock of foreign direct investment in New Zealand or Canada that has the ninth largest stock of foreign investment in New Zealand. But we know that investors do a little ticky tour around the countries in an agreement anyway to find a way to sue. So unless they've got side letters from every single one of the other 10 countries, it's meaningless. But they won't even tell us which countries until the signing on Wednesday. And I can guarantee you then that they'll say, oh, and we're still negotiating with some of the others. A dog is a dog is a dog. And I'm sorry for dog lovers, but it's a dog. So we need, when this gets tabled in the house, and get sent to the select committee to have every one of you and everyone who made submissions last time sending in submissions again, even if it's one paragraph saying, you sold us out. On the It's Our Future website, there will be guides as to how to do this. We also need people to be warning that if and when the US decides to rejoin this deal, there will be 50,000 people on the street down in Auckland. There will be people at every one of the towns that there have been protests at around the country over the TPPA. Because Trump is already saying the old deal was tremendously bad. We might think of rejoining a deal, but
but it will have to be much better for America than the old deal that America dictated. Just two days ago, the Treasury Secretary Mnuchin said the same thing. So the US is looking at rejoining. And any notion that we might tell them, oh sorry, no, you have to accept less than last time, is when the flock of flying pigs go past again. They will demand, and our governments will supplicate themselves to those demands, a great deal more than just reactivating what has been suspended. And so we need to be vigilant in saying to them, we don't buy that this deal is any different from before. And we want you to put in legislation now in the House that not only will you never agree to the dog in agreements again, but that you will never sign an agreement with the US that contains the provisions that you have suspended and that you will have a proper democratic consultative process and that you will release the texts and you will have democratic engagement and you will do independent impact analyses and we will have agreements that genuinely reflect what David Parker promised when he came into office a really progressive agreement that is for the 99% and not for the 1%, an agreement that is about redistributing wealth, an agreement that is about reigning in corporate power, an agreement that is actually about the end of neoliberalism that they promised us. And that's what we expect of them. And if we let this deal go through without putting their feet to the fire, then we are going to have a hell of a fight about the next ones. Currently they are negotiating. The RCEP that has China and India and Japan and Australia and New Zealand and Korea and ASEAN. They're currently negotiating the Pacific Alliance Agreement that has Chile and Colombia and Peru and Mexico along with some others. They are currently negotiating, uh, renegotiating the New Zealand-China FTA. They're renegotiating the New Zealand-Singapore FTA. They're talking about negotiations with New Zealand and the EU. They're talking about negotiations of New Zealand uh, and the UK. And unless they conduct that genuine open consultative process that they promised about how to make these progressive and working for people and planet, then we're going to have the same recycled toxic deals through what we call a process of organ harvesting. They're taking bits out of the TPPA and they're appearing in every single one of those agreements. And so this is not just about stopping them signing on Wednesday. This is about us taking back control of our country, but in a way that, as Moana said, honours to Te Reti Waitangi. The tribunal claim is not finished yet. The tribunal process is still going on, and one of the fundamental questions is the right of Māori to have a fundamental say about what international treaties are signed in the name of the country. The petition that is currently on the don'tdoit.nz website is that bigger agenda I referred to before. It's the agenda about making the process, the content, and the goals and vision of agreements fundamentally different. We need people to sign it. We need not only you to make sure that you've signed it, but we need every one of you to send it to 10 people on your email list and to get them to send it to 10 more people so that we can have a snowball effect Firstly, for when it's submitted to the House on Wednesday, but as it continues through the House, so, they, so that people continue to have a voice 
demanding change. Finally, I just want to say a huge thank you to Chantel uh, and John and Penny and Team Auckland. Yay! And to the teams all throughout the country. Nelson had a protest yesterday. There are protests in other parts of the country today. The Christchurch team uh, have done a bit of uh, civil disobedience that I think might continue. Um, and we've had plans now on Wednesday in Wellington for a big rally uh, at the time uh, of the... Is Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday. Oops. Um, at the time uh, of the signing. But we also need those of you who have contacts in the political parties to start telling them that the price is high. Only the Greens, if you listened to the parliamentary debate the other day, only Golras said we oppose this deal. So the Greens need big ups for that. Labour, Kiritapu Allen, who should know better and does know better, gave the most appalling speech as a cheerleader for the TPPA 11. Willie Jackson at least referred to the problems with the treaty exception. But Labour needs to be reminded that there is a price to pay. And so let's just remember that we have achieved a lot. It is you who have achieved this. You need to remain committed, believe you can make a difference, and embrace every opportunity that we have to have our voices heard. And so let's just finish this little rah-rah before I hand back to Robert with a TPPA? No way!